This lesson is called Probabilities Involving Permutations and Combinations. So let's get a quick review. One thing we know about probability is that the probability of an event occurring is equal to the number of desired outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. So that's what we already know, and that's the basic formula for any probability. All right, so understanding that, let's look at this example. All right, so here's the question. You got to flip a coin eight times. What is the probability of it landing on heads three times? All right, so this is the probability of getting three heads out of eight flips. All right, so this is my desired outcome over total possible outcomes. So I'm going to come with total possible outcomes first. All right, so if you flip a coin, every time you flip it, it could be heads or tails. So i got two options for my first flip. I'm going to flip it eight times, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's two options for this flip, two options for that flip, and so forth. So essentially, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos. So I got a total of possible outcomes of two to the eighth power, whatever that number is. So my total of possible outcomes. And my desired outcomes is specifically three heads within that mix. So it could be heads, 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 and then the rest of them have to be tails. But it doesn't have to come in that order. It can come in any, any order you want. So te technically, that's a word. If I think about that, going back to the first learned combination permutations, that's the word H H H T T T. Uh, and there's a combination of any of those letters. So basically, that's a combination of I have eight letters, and I want three of them specifically to be an H. So it's a combination of H U's three. All right. So uh, you could have thought about this. Three of them have to be tails. I mean, five of them have to be tails. So you could have said a combination of H U's five which coincidentally is also equal to the same thing as combination of 8 choose 3. So I my, my numerator is a combination of 8 choose 3, because I want three of those letters to be heads. So i got to find a value of that combination and find a value of, of 2 to the 8th power. And that I can reduce that and call that decimal probability. So let's do that. So that combination of 8 choose 3 is equal to 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial 3 factorial. That's how the combination formula works. So this is basically um, 8 times 7 times 6 all over 3 times 2. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. So that gives you basically 8 times 7. So that's 56. So our numerator is 56. Our denominator is 2 to the 8th. So 2 to the 8th is really 2 to the 4 times 2 to the 4th. Let's think about it that way then. So that's 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 4th. So that's 56 over 16 times 16. Um, I know 56 is divisible by 8, so I can cancel that, make it a little smaller. Divide this by 8 and divide that by 8. So this becomes 2. This becomes 7. So what you have now is 7 over 2 times 16. 7 over 32. So that probability is 7, out of 30, 7 over 32, or as a percentage, it's about, you could say, 21.87%. Um, Either way, the, the fraction or the percentage or the decimal. All right, I got a new example. Oh, I will copy any of this that you didn't already know, and I got a new example for you. All right, new example. A committee of five people be selected from a group of five men and six women. And what is the probability that the committee contains two men and three women? All right, so whenever I get started, I always write down this and look at probability, desired over total. So when in doubt, I know this is what I'm trying to find out, the desired outcomes over total outcomes. So if you think about this, you got a committee of five people that have to be selected, and two of them have to be men, three have to be women. They don't really say the men's name, so it could be men one, man two, man three, man four, man five. And any of those men 
could be within this set. Man one and man two. Could man one and man three, man one and man four. There's a lot of combinations of men I can choose. So I know for the men, it's a combination of five choosing a two. And I know for the women, six of them, it could be any other woman. Woman one, woman two, woman three, or any combination thereof. So this is a combination of any six women, I want to choose just three of them. And this is my desired outcome. All right, so this is what I want. Two men, three women. So my numerator in this fraction is a combination of five choose two times combination of six choose three. All right, now my denominator is, it could have been any of these men and women for this committee. All right, so I got 11 different options for people for that committee. So my denominator, my total possible outcomes is a combination of, I got 11 options, I need to choose five to hold a seat in that committee. So the denominator is a combination of 11 choose five. All right, so we can do the math for it. The numerator here, I can do the math for it, should be 200. The denominator here for 11 choose 5 should be should be 462 people, so 462 ways, and that's about 43.3%. So we can call this fraction that percentage, and that's the probability of that happening. Even one last one, in this, new, in this new one, you try it on your own, and then see if it matches, your answer matches mine. So here's a new example. All right, here's a new example. Pause the video, read it, and try on your own. But the question says, each of the five cards has one of the letters A, B, C, D, and E. So here are the letters A, B, C, and D, and E on the cards, written on them. Um, the cards are shuffled. What is the probability that the letters A and B are together? All right, so pause the video. See if you can try it on your own. See if you can answer on your own. Um, and then check back with me. Just pause it now. All right, so if you tried it, you should have thought about this. All right, so it's desired. When in doubt, start by writing this fraction. Desired over total. So let me first figure out, let's figure out my total possible outcomes. I've got five cards, and I can shuffle them up five factorial ways. So my total possible outcomes is five factorial. All right, now my desired outcome specifically has A and B always being together. So it could be A, B together like this, and other cards are there. So it could be B, C, D, E. So in that case, you got one, two, three, four. Oh, let's see. Oh, D is not there. So you got one, two, three, four different things you can come up with. Or it could have been B, A, and then C, D, E, and still one, two, three, four different ways. You could arrange those. So if this is it, I'm treating like BA is one card because they're always together. So that's one card, and this is one card, and that's one card. It's four factorial ways of rearranging it if, B, if AB came in that order. If I rearrange it again for A and B there, I basically multiply that by two factorial or two. So our answer should be 4 factorial times 2 factorial. All the ways you can rearrange those, those cards, A and B is all together, always together. So the final answer should be 5 factorial is 120, 2 factorial is just 2, 4 factorial is 24. All right, so that's true. Some of this reduces, like um, 2 and 120 reduces. To be 24 times 1, and this is over 60. Both of those can reduce again. So I divide both of those by, say, 4. 4 goes in this one 15 times, 4 goes into this one 6 times. So 6 over 15. 3 goes in both of those. So it's 2 over 5. So my math is right, it's about a 40% chance. A two-fifths chance for the half. All right, that's all I have. Good luck.